mighty power and God's grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Lori and Jen. Let's begin today with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I wanted to make a quick announcement. Um, Dawn Woodring is offering a Monday morning meditation. It's a weekly uh, teleconference on Mondays at 11 a.m. Uh, you can get that information. We have an event set up on Facebook that you can get the information. Um, you'll need to contact her to um, get the telephone number and everything. So there's also um, the ability to have a standing reservation so you don't need to get that on a weekly basis. Um, <clears throat> each week we are so blessed to have Deborah and uh, Matt and Lori and John, um, and to be able to continue with our ministry here online. We ask you to share your appreciation through a love offering. Please take a moment now. If you're making an offering through Facebook, you can go and click on the Learn More button at the top and of our page and then click on the Donate button. If you are sending your offering um, by mail, please make your checks out to Angels Landing and send it to Angels Landing, P.O. Box 100, Millbury, Ohio, 43447. Thank you for your continued support. And now we're going to have a song by Lori and John. inside of my soul It's the one that I've tried to write over and over again I'm awake in the infinite home But you sing to me all to me of the plans that you have for 
was lovely. Thank you, Laurie and John. <sighs> to come back and to pray, to come back today, to take this time to come back. Take a deep breath with me. Settle into your seat. None in a Japanese master during the me, uh, Meiji era, received a university professor who came to inquire about Zen. Nanin served tea, he poured his visitor's cup full and then kept on pouring. The professor watched the overflow until he no longer could restrain himself. It is over full, no more will go in. Like this cup, the master said, you are full of your own opinions and speculations. How can I show you Zen unless you first empty your cup? And that's what we gather for together on Sundays. We gather to take the time to empty the week's contents to siphon through and let fall away all that which is overfilling our cup. That doesn't need to be overfilling our cup. The stuff that taints it, the stuff that we need to let go of. Okay, so this is our time in the week and we come back week after week or whenever we can to refocus to refocus and remind ourselves of that divine lens, to bring our minds and our hearts right, rising, lifting, coming back to, to remind ourselves to renew the commitment that we have to living in an awakened way in a sacred manner. And that's what we gather for. So let's just take a few deep breaths in. Settle into that very conscious intention in your heart space, in your mind space, in your soulful spirit space. Renewing our commitment to create new beliefs in a framework that works for us in a more sacred way. And we've talked about this throughout our series. If you're just joining us today, we have a series. You can tap into the last four. Today, we're looking at the fifth chakra. 
And in order to really bring ourselves, lift ourselves, rise into a place of deep healing, of more awakened awareness of divine energy in our lives, of living the best life in the highest vibration we can. We have covered the fact that there's a new framework to buy into that kind of helps us shed all these old beliefs. So just an overview of that, like we do every week. Uh, we have spiritual transformation is a, tax, uh, is a task of the soul, not the mind, okay? So <clears throat> we're getting into the chakras. And again, you can go online and read all you want. There are great books out there. But we're looking at the chakras from the lens or the perspective of soulful healing, of spirit rising. Okay, so we're going to give our mind a little bit to chew on today, but then we're going to really work from the heart space. So that spiritual transformation is the task of the soul, and we recognize that. We make a commitment to heal. That commitment is renewed, coming back to this gathering every week, doing the work in between, spending a few moments of some sort of mindful practice, some sort of awareness that's heightened throughout the week that makes absorbing everything else a little easier to bear, okay? So we make that soul contract, that commitment. And then we abide by what we've called the shortcut of the four agreements, um, not taking anything personal, no assumptions based on old beliefs, um, looking at raw truth, the impeccable, the impeccableness of your word, which we're really going to get into today, and to bring a pure heart forth with pure intention in a conscious way. And we're setting that space right now. Okay, so with that, uh, I've opened up the circle. I opened up the circle on this space before everybody necessarily dialed in and the live space went on Facebook. Uh, but we, we do honor and we bring in the uh, guardians, the guides, and the ancestors from all four directions, as well as calling in the power of Mother Earth to rise to help us heal, calling in all that is in the universe, divine, coming through and down for us. And so that is all present here. And so whatever I channel through and speak about is for the highest good of all those coming through. So if it doesn't hit your direct target, it's hitting somebody else's. And the important thing to recognize is that being part of this gathering space, you're holding the space for somebody else to heal as well as opening your heart for yourself. Okay, so the chakras, <clears throat> this beautiful system of energy we have in our bodies, uh, looking at the root chakra, <sighs> tribal connection, all is one is the truth in that root chakra. So pull that back in, feel that root chakra and tune into all is one, we are one, all is one. And then moving up into that second chakra, relationships honor one another. Okay, so our one-on-one -on -one relationships are all in that second chakra. So honor one another, our sacred truth. Now we move up into that solar plexus chakra, the third one, that center of ourselves, completing the internal uh, or the external chakras, the part of us that reaches out to the external world, and that is honoring ourselves in the world, okay? Honor yourself in the world. And then we moved up into the heart chakra. And so let's call that back in to activate our heart chakra and recognize that love is our divine power. And everything we work through this heart space is our divine power as human beings. Love is our divine power. And so now we're going to move from the external space and then our neutral, and now we're going to move up into the internal spaces, our fifth, sixth, and seventh chakras. And today we're going to explore the fifth. Now the fifth chakra, the throat chakra, is also connected to the second chakra that honor one another because we're talking about voice, we're talking about choice, 
And this is where our expression in the world comes forth in the most obvious manner. We have lots of expressions in the world, but our voice is a big part of that one. Okay, so our voice expresses our choices and that's all part of connecting to our second chakra. And so those two connect and what we do with our fifth chakra affects our relationships and our relationships also affect the fifth chakra. So we're gonna explore that a little bit. How those can connect um, can be sometimes, you know, whether or not we're using our voice as a negative weapon or if we're silenced by trauma. So working with those two together helps us uh, heal those spaces that are preventing us from being in our highest vibration. We can approach the art of communication in one of two ways, either with a utilitarian approach, merely expressing information needed to get the job done, or with a deeper approach, becoming aware of how we say things, the tone of our voice, the silence between our words and the feelings we express. That's a part of uh, this beautiful book, The Art of Everyday Ecstasy um, by Margot Anand. So that saying, I, I just, I took that directly from her book because I think that that really helps us focus in on this higher vibration, this higher healed place, okay? So where we're going to, and what I encourage you to do is really explore your fifth chakra today from that deeper approach, becoming aware of how we say things, the tone in our voice, the silence between words, and the feelings that we express. So choice, the center of choice, choice itself is the expression of our power all right here, the expression of our inner power comes forth first from our voice. So that empowerment can be snuffed and it can be released depending on how the relationships in our lives are. We are not born silent. We are typically born with a great burst of of expression when we come into the world. And that expression, just like we're not born with particular biases, that expression can be affected by a variety of different types of relationships in our lives. Functional, dysfunctional, traumatic, not traumatic. Do we learn to be shy? Do we learn to be quiet? Is that a natural part of us initially? Or is that something we learn because we constantly get pushed on? It can be either, which one is it for you? Our choice, uh, is it sourced from your consciousness, an awakened state of mind? Our choice is an act of creating, creating and maintaining harmony. So everything that you express, are you in sync? Are you in alignment with empowered thoughts, with empowering others, with empowering yourself? Is that coming into play there? Or are you out of alignment? Are you harming? Are you being harmed? This is all fifth chakra. Energetic choices, physical choices. These are the two worlds we both live in, this third dimensional and the fifth dimensional, a foot in both. They are both in existence now. So the interesting part about our fifth chakra is that um, <clears throat> it, it's about what's happening in your mind. It's not about what's happening outside of you. You're responding or reacting to it, but this all starts here. This all starts here. This is very directly connected to our consciousness or in a lot of cases, our unconsciousness, not being conscious, reacting instead of responding and what comes from here for that. So how do we choose to express ourselves? Do we take responsibility for it? Okay. When 
we're out of balance in the throat chakra, um, we make negative choices that can impact our health and wellness with words. Simply one word can literally change the path of relationships, of where your day is going, where somebody else's day is going. We have our thyroid here. We have our throat. We have our mouths. We have our jaws. This is all part of it. So TMJ, addiction, any sort of addiction, smoking, eating, drugs, drinking, that all resides here. What's closed in our fifth chakra? That can be out of balance. Thyroid issues throat issues, sinus issues. This can all be part of this, okay? So are we in harmony? When you have issues there, something's out of balance, something's out of sync. You can dive in to see what that might be about. Ask yourself, do you have a life of blame or do you have a life of accountability? That's a good place to start. If you have an, a, a life of accountability and you can take responsibility for your expression in the world, it doesn't mean that you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you're always doing it right. It means that when you do it wrong, you can be truthful enough with yourself to correct it, to realign, to rebalance. We all say things at different times that just don't work. And one of those signposts is, Am I empowering the person I'm talking to or am I bringing them down? I had an example of this just this last weekend. I'll, I'll own my own truth here. It's, it's not easy sometimes, but uh, I had a total parent fail. <laughs> I, I, um, I had my daughter, she uh, was leaving the house and she was supposed to have her room cleaned before she left. And after she left, I went in her room and to me, it, didn't seem like it was clean. <laughs> and I tried to call her out on it. I was, well, hey, I texted her. Do you think this is a clean room? And she said, I put all my laundry away. You know, I, I did this, I did that. I did the best I could do. I thought it was okay. And I kind of had that parent trap at the time in my own head, like, oh, I got her, you know. Uh, and I didn't even see it coming. I just realized that I was using a lot of disempowering words and not allowing her to come up and in and own it and say like, I did the best I could do, mom. I didn't realize it needed to be dusted and swept and everything else. Uh, and I felt horrible after the interaction, but I didn't know why until I took some time to reflect on that and say, why am I, why is this making me feel so horrible? I'm the parent, I'm allowed to, you know, teach her this lesson. But what was I really teaching her? She was trying to actually talk to me about it. And I was trying to have this authoritative attitude because I was tired and I didn't have the bandwidth for a conversation. And that, that was kind of my fail. So recognizing that was my quick, quick understanding all of a sudden when I said, oh, everything I'm saying to her is disempowering. I'm trying to silence her. I'm trying to shame her. I'm not using this uh, example at all. I, co I could have easily said, you know, why don't we talk about it when you get home? And then we could talk about how to put your best foot forward. And I could be a little looser and understand she was doing that. And her best that day just wasn't what I expected. And my expectations were off. It'd be different if she put forth no effort, but she did put forth effort. So I had to own the fact that I was being disempowering and I wasn't using my fifth chakra and its highest good to lift her up, to accept her and love her right where she was. And so I have to atone that. I have to bring myself back in alignment with that, owning that, forgiving myself, asking you know her to forgive me that, not that I said anything, just that I didn't communicate in a healthy way. So that's part of what all that, you know, is, is about. Uh, Carolyn Mace does a deep dive, a, a really wonderful dive in her um, Sacred Powers uh, series. And she brings up eight different aspects of the fifth chakra that are important 
to explore. Uh, the first one being, if you're really in alignment here, um, you don't betray yourself or others. Uh, you stay aligned. You stay aligned with each other and you don't betray anybody. Betrayal is something that once we, especially if it's rooted here, if it comes from here, it hits the heart chakra. And it's one of the hardest things to shake. It, it does a lot of damage, especially if stored there for a while. So, you know, not making sure that we don't use our voice and our choices to betray. The second one is to live with integrity and truth. Even when the truth isn't something that we want, it's, it's bold, it's exciting, it's erotic, it's attractive, it's empowering. Um, it requires risk to be that authentic, to live in that kind of truth. And initially, we get a shaky voice. It's scary. We get choked up when we know that the truth might hurt somebody else or ourselves. And that's where dysfunction comes also. So when you can speak it and let it go, it does set you free. The fallout of it might not be comfortable, but the lack of that truth can cause even more harm. So consider that. Uh, three, to know and live your values. What are your values? Do you know them? Do you live them? That's where we build up this shame thing and that comes in, that sinks down and gets stored in our third chakra. When we've somehow shamed ourselves, when we have regret, when we're not true to ourselves, when we're not in alignment with our integrity, with our own truth, with our values that we live by. When something like that has gone off and we haven't spoken from that place of integrity, oh, we, we really take that on heavy. So know and live your values. And when you don't, get back in alignment. Uh, number four is to have a spiritual worldview, to understand we are all one. We practice that every week when we come together. We are all one. To remember that and take that into your daily life. It really is like a salve to this fifth chakra when we can remember that. When I'm about to spew something, not thinking, and where can't we do that right now? With all the political arenas out there, with all the different hot topics we have, our words matter, whether they're typed, whether they're spoken, okay? So when we forget that we are all one, even those people we dislike are part of our tribe and we separate ourselves from them and we spew negativity toward them, we are hurting ourselves in the fifth chakra and it gets stored all the way down. It can be toxic and it can really damage our health, our wellness, as well as the other person's. You don't have to agree with people. You don't even have to like anybody else. But to really be in alignment with yourself, you also don't cause harm to somebody else. And your fifth chakra has great power and great choice connected to it. So consider that, how you speak, what you speak, about whom you speak. We are all one. Caroline talks about uh, the fifth deep dive is to practice kindness and don't diminish its power. When we practice kindness in the fifth chakra, a kind word to a stranger, to the uh, you know, person checking you out at the grocery store, how's your day? Thank you for being here. Whatever it is, when you see somebody, you know, I, I love when I see people that you know, look like they put a lot of time into their expression in the world of how they're dressed and what they look like. like you could just say, wow, what an awesome as ensemble. You look phenomenal today. It lifts them. You can feel how it lifts them and then it lifts you to, to do the acts of kindness that don't even get recognition, oh, but it makes your heart feel so good. Okay, that brings us back into alignment. Don't diminish the power of kindness. It's not just important to be kind, it's actually a sacred act. And it's one that helps us stay aligned and keeps raising our vibration. To be reflective daily is number six, to be reflective daily. 
if we take the time, even a moment, to align ourselves with these thoughts and feelings outside of just Sunday gathering, and we check in with this, and we make a renewed commitment, and we recognize its power, the power of my word, the power of my voice, the power of my choices, ah, I can be more awakened, I can be more conscious, I can make better decisions. Number seven, to be of service. We know what that is, to be of service. But how can you be of service with your words? How can you be of service with your voice? How can you be of service with your choices? That brings your fifth chakra into alignment. And lastly is to empower others. This is huge. This is the example I gave you with my daughter. This is huge. Do you empower and lift others or do you tear them down? Or do you just come across neutral? Like, well, I'm not gonna lift this person up. I just won't insult them. How, in your greatest challenges, can you actually empower people with your choices, with your words, with your fifth chakra? How can you lift somebody up and hold them in a space to recognize that we are one, that we are the same? So the sacred message of the throat chakra is to surrender personal will to the divine. This is the sacred message because all the things we've been giving your brain to chew on here, oh, it's a lot, it's a lot. And it's, it's kind of heavy and it's like, oh my gosh, how, how can I be held accountable with all my human flaws for everything I say, for all of my intention behind my words, for all of my choices, right? Like this is, oh, this feels like a lot, but there's this choice I have if I'm in alignment with my own divine presence in my life, in that spark inside of me that is the aspect of the divine, in my own willingness to surrender to that, surrender my personal will to the divine in my throat chakra, I can just reserve myself for those moments that follow all of those guidelines. I watched Hamilton this weekend for the first time, and I just keep thinking, you know, uh, talk less, smile more. <laughs> there's, a, there's a message in there, uh, you know, Aaron Burr's message. At the same time, there's also a great message that Alexander Hamilton's trying to give about Make sure you know what your integrity, you know, what you believe, what your values are, and hold yourself up to that with integrity. That right here. So whew, that's a lot for your brain to understand and kind of pull up, call up. Hopefully some of the stuff hit you in a way that you're like, oh yeah, I do that, I do that. Okay. But as we've been learning, that frontal lobe can go ahead and, you know, really grind on this a lot. It can keep you up at night. What we want to do is move our energy from here, back here to the cerebellum from our frontal lobe. Okay. The yogis, the Siddha masters, they know all about these intuitive parts and how to stimulate them in our brain. And one of the most effective really easy and accessible ways to do this is through sound. In the fifth chakra, that's huge. Singing, chanting, music, our breath. This is huge here. They're carriers of intelligent frequencies come through our voice, which can alter the chemistry of the neurons in our brain. Okay, and that's what pulls us back here and brings us into alignment. So as I've talked about before, we can get into the psychology of things and pick it apart and find all these, you know, uh, pathways of trauma in your brain that have been in your life and keep one by one pulling them in and aligning them. We can also use the chanting to activate and bring into alignment bypass what we have to think, figure out, and know. So the sound for the fifth chakra is hum. 
H-A-M, home, okay? And the mudra is you clasp all your fingers together with your, your fingers going to the inside very gently and your thumbs touch, okay? So this is the one I see mostly. However, in studying it, I've also seen just the regular hands with the thumbs together. But this is usually more associated with the second chakra. However, because second and fifth are related, I think that either one, depending on what feels more comfortable to you. Now, if it feels uncomfortable to you, understand that there's muscle memory in our bodies that indicate and talk to us all the time about what's working and what isn't, when we're out of alignment. So sometimes if something feels uncomfortable, it's because that's where the work needs to be done. I've been doing body work with people for almost 30 years. Every place there's a place that's uncomfortable in the body, there's a message there. So that's what I'm really getting for everybody right now is actually the fingers in is the better way to do that. And you can hold it high or you can put it in your lap, okay? But that fingers in part of what's uncomfortable about that is the fact that you're not necessarily in alignment. So that's the mudra. So let's do some meditation with this, okay? We're um, just sit comfortably. We're not going to do the mudra or the chanting yet. We're just going to get ourselves into a mindset to invite in the highest vibration for that. But we need to let some things go. We need to work on the stuff that may be uh, rattling around in that frontal lobe now. So I want you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Bring your breath down into your belly. Activate that root chakra. <sighs> All this one. Honoring one another, honoring yourself. Just breathe through those first three chakras, feeling yourself root down to Mother Earth. Uh, bringing that awareness up into your heart. Love is divine power. Hmm. I'm going to read you some of the messages of your true voice. I am your voice. I'm afraid to be loud, to be full and expansive and demanding. I think nobody wants to hear me. When I speak, I'm not sure if it is me that comes through or if I'm just a parrot speaking other people's voices. Try that on, maybe that's you. I am the door to the body and the mind. I am the one who speaks for the spirits and who makes friends with the body. I am the throat. I take the energy that is all around me, assimilate it and give it voice. Or, I am the one who asks the question, who am I? Maybe your throat chakra aligns with this message. I'm your guide. I speak your truth. You have a unique talent to contribute, and it is my task to find out what that is and to create it. I team up with the belly. With the support of the belly, my voice is grounded in your bones. Then when my voice speaks the truth, your body dances and your heart sings. I am the sounding board of your soul, the gateway of your breath. I am speech. I am laughter. I am silence. I invoke the spirit into the body and create new forms. I am the funnel of the flow. I am the poet. I am the singer. I sing the song of your soul. What does your throat chakra say? Is your throat chakra silenced? Is it muffled? Is it quiet? Has it been damaged, stomped out? 
especially as women, many women have been silenced over the years. And we're coming into that time for the last 50 years that many of us are finding a voice and saying, stop, saying no, saying, here I am, honor me. Listen to the message of your true voice. And if you sense any blocks there, pull them up into your consciousness. Any place that you've been silenced or wounded, pull that forth. Pull forth any place where you have possibly done the wounding with your words, with your voice, or not used your voice at a time that you should have not used it in alignment with divine purpose. Just look at that, allow it to be there. Don't judge it, just see it. Invite equanimity and find the neutral place in your emotional body to not have to judge yourself, whether weak or strong, healthy or not. No judgment, just see it, just see it for what it is. And invite in the intention that with your chant, it clears away anything that's blocking you from your authentic voice. Surrender that personal will to the divine and let the divine bring forth your authentic voice. Genuine words come from the heart space. They're meant to empower and open not shut down and tear. So we're opening that space between the heart space and your fifth chakra. We're opening that space between that throat chakra and all of your other chakras, and especially the second one, clearing away any blocks, any obstacles. Committing to more listening using the pause, the breath between words to invite in the sacred constantly, to invite in the sacred, to invite in your divinity, to rise and be delivered through your voice, using it as that sacred expression. So with that, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and go into chanting. Hum, om. Use the mudra if you're comfortable with that. If you're not, that's okay. Use what works for you. Hum, om. Remember, we're going to move our head from left to right while we do this, gently. Some of the lower chakras. Uh, there was a reason that we, that I started the chanting loud and strong and then kind of pulled back and went into a soft space. I was guided to do that. Today I'm hearing that we're going to be kind of soft and steady with this. But that's what's in the highest good for everybody tuning in. Okay, so hum, om, left to right so that we get that, oh, cellular depth by left right brain movement okay so everything that you brought forth thus far in this meditation can now be released as we focus solely on the chant um Oh. 
Feel that, feel that in your throat. Feel the power opening in you, in your silence, unlocking your authentic voice. Now, if you're still feeling blocked at all, we're going to do an exercise of releasing that with a heavy out breath. We'll do three of them. And draw it back down through your root chakra again. Drawing your breath in and up through your seventh chakra and coming back down and settling the balance of all of them. Hmm. I hope that resonates for you. I pray that that opens you and that helps bring forth the voice of your own sacred nature. Hmm. Hope everybody's feeling better. 
Wow, beautiful job. Thank you. Always, Lori and John. That was a great song. Okay, so time for a little blessing. Uh, I think today I'm going to use um, a little bit of an adaptation of the prayer of St. Francis. Okay, so <sighs> close your eyes and take this in. Great Spirit, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled, as to console, to be understood, as to understand, to be loved, as to love. For it's in giving that we receive, and it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to new life. May we use our voice and our choice to bring forth this beauty, this blessing into the world. May we stay conscientious of it and may we live sacred with our words. Walk, talk, live sacred. Aho. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to gathering with you again next week. Have a blessed week. Now we are going to take a quick break, grab yourself a drink, and we hope that you can stay with us to talk. <laughs>